Hello and welcome to another maths video. As part of our maths this term, if you're at home or at school, I'm going to be filming some videos to help us recap everything we've done in year six so far. Hopefully it'll be especially helpful if you're continuing with your home learning and if you're in school, it's something that you've always got to refer to as well. Today we are going to start with the four operations, look at them all, look at the methods and how we would solve some problems. So enjoy and let me know if you need any help. Please remember that you can take a break or go back through anything at any time. Firstly, we're going to look at addition. So the other words associated with addition are sum, plus, add, total and all together. So for example, if I asked you the sum of the numbers seven and three, I'd be asking you to add them together. So here is our first question. Now I'll read it to you because it might have been a while since you've read out these long numbers. So we've got 369,792 plus 65,497. And I've lined these up in the bunk bed method, our column addition method, and I've labelled our place value columns. You don't have to label your place value columns every time, but it just helps us to see what we are adding. It's really important to remember that even though there are fewer numbers in my second number, it's important that I get my place value correct, otherwise I won't get the correct answer. So we're going to start by adding our ones column and start working our way through. So firstly, we've got two plus seven, which equals nine. I've then got 90 plus 90, because they're in the tens column, the value of the nine is 90 or nine tens. So my nine tens plus my nine tens gives me 18 tens. And I know that I can't have 18 in one column. So I've got to keep my eight in my tens and I put my 100 underneath. And I must remember to add that on. So I've then got my 700s plus my 400s plus my 100. I'm going to use my number bonds here to help me, which will give me 1200s or 1200s. I've then got my thousands column, 9000s. Oh, I'm going to use this my number bond here. So I've got 9000 plus 1000, which is 10,000, plus my 5000 is 15,000, or one in my 10,000 column and five thousands. I can also cross these off as I'm going along if that's going to help me. I've then got my tens of thousands, so I've got six tens of thousands plus six tens of thousands plus the one under there, so I've got 13 or 130,000. And then finally, this gap here, that's the same as having a zero in it. It's got no value in my hundred thousands column. So I've got 300,000 plus 100,000 is 400,000. Next we have got subtraction as our next operation. So with the words associated with subtraction are minus, subtract, take away and also difference. So if I asked you to find the difference between three and seven, I'd be asking you to take away three from seven or count on so you're finding that difference which would be four. We are going to do a couple of subtraction questions. So firstly, we are going to do 49,032, subtract 28,721, and I've lined it up in our column subtraction method, and I've labelled our place value columns and checked all my numbers are in the correct column. So we're going to start with our ones again, and we're going to do two subtract one is one, I've got my two, three tens, subtract two tens, which would be 10 or one ten. I then get to zero, subtract seven, zero hundreds, take away seven hundreds. And it's not that I can't do this, because I can. I could take away seven hundred from zero and get negative seven hundred, but that's not going to help me in my columns and my place value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some exchanging. So I'm going to move 1,000 out of my thousands column, so that will leave me with 8,000s in my thousands column, and I'm going to exchange it to 10 one hundreds because they have the same value. I've just been able to convert it and move it to a different column because my 1,000 is exactly the same as 10 
100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000. And then that helps me because well, now I can get a positive number from doing my 10 hundreds, subtract my 7 hundreds, which will give me 3 hundreds. I then got 8,000, subtract 8,000, which will give me zero, and my 40,000 take away 20,000. Now let's have a look at this question. Now we're going to work this out in two different ways and I'm going to explain why. So on the surface I can see already that actually this is going to be quite a challenge for me. I can't do these subtractions without getting a negative number. So what I need to do is I need to go from the value that I can see, so my thousands, and I can take this 1000, but what commonly happens is people try to put it in the ones column because they know that is where they need to start. Now if I do that, that would be like saying that 1000 has the same value as 10 ones. And I know that my 10 ones will give me 10 and that's not equal to 1000. So I can't just take the one from my thousands and convert it into 10 ones because that's not going to work. So what I can do is I can take that thousand and convert it into 10 hundreds. I can also then take one of my hundreds and convert it into 10 tens. That's quite a nice one because I know 10, 10, 10 times 10 equals 100. And then I can take one of my tens and convert it into 10 ones. So then I can do 10 subtract 9 is 1. 9 subtract 6 or 9 tens subtract 6 tens is 3 tens. 900 subtract 200 is 700. And 3000 subtract 9000 is 3000. But let's see if there's a quicker way to do this. So what I could do is I could subtract 1 from both of my numbers. So that would give me 4,000 subtract 1, or 1 less, or 1 fewer than 4,000 would be 3,999. I'm then going to subtract my second number, which would be 268, because I must do exactly the same to both of my numbers, and then I can do my subtraction, and you can see that I'm going to end up with exactly the same answer. So you've got two different methods, you can choose which one you find easiest, um, but this is definitely the fastest method, but this helps to explain how we do our exchanging. Okay, so we are halfway through our operations. We've looked at our addition and subtraction. I'm now going to give you some challenges to have a go at, and then I would suggest you take a little break, a little brain break, and then come back to it when you're ready to do some multiplication and division. Now for these questions, I have put the missing number in slightly different places. Now you're still going to be practicing the bunk bed method or your column addition or column subtraction, but you've got to think about which method you need to use. Now when your missing number is in a different place, what I'd like you to do is think of a really simple number sentence to help you know which operation you need to do. I like to think of seven plus three equals 10. So I would just move those numbers around so I know where my missing number is. So if I had this number sentence, but it was using my numbers, my 10, 7 and 3, I'd start with my largest number to subtract from. I would have a missing number here and I'd have my answer as 3. So how would I find this missing number? I know it needs to be 7, but what would I have to do? Do I do an inverse and add? No, because that would give me 10 plus 3 would be 13 and I know that wouldn't make sense. So I need to do this number here, subtract this number here. So then I know that I need to do exactly the same. I need to take my 7,694 7, and subtract 369 to get my missing number. For the second one, it doesn't matter which side our missing number box is. It's like an equation, this equal sign means they have the same value on each side. So all we're doing is adding these two numbers and putting our answer the other side, just to show that it's equal. So for example, I would do my three plus seven and my equals 10 there, or 10 is equal to three plus seven. So I need to add these two numbers together. For my final one, I know that my answer my sum is going to be 10 over here and then I would have my 7 
and my 3. So what would I have to do with these numbers if I didn't have this number, if that was my missing number box? I would have to do my 10, subtract 3 to give me my 7 here. So I do need to do the inverse now. I need to take my sum, subtract this number here, and then that will give me my missing number. If you're ever unsure afterwards, go back through and check it makes sense. 7 plus 3 equals 10. Yes, I must have got that one right. So see if you can find the missing numbers. Here are your answers, your missing numbers to your addition and subtraction number sentences. I hope you enjoyed your little break, managed to mark your answers and are ready to go on to multiplication and division. So for our multiplication, we have got the words times, multiply, lots of, and product and then when we look at our number sentence we are looking at multiplying a factor by a factor to get our product so we're going to have a look at doing 6438 multiplied by 34 so the first thing we're going to do is partition our number 34 into our ones and our tens and that's what we're going to have as each layer so the first layer we are going to do 6438 38 multiplied by 4 multiplied by our ones and in the second layer we're going to do 6438 multiplied by 30 and I've also put my placeholder in straight away so that I don't forget the reason I've got a placeholder here is because when we do our second lot of multiplying this is always a tens number so for us it's 30 and whenever we multiply by a multiple of 10 we are going to have a zero in our ones column if we are looking at whole positive numbers. So it is really helpful if we know our times tables here. So it might be that you need to do some times table practice as well. So 4 multiplied by 8. 4 multiplied by 8 is 30. Two. So just like when we're doing our adding, because we can't fit all 32 ones into one column, we're going to exchange those 30 ones for the three tens. Now we know that this is 30 multiplied by 4, but so it's easier and helps us with our multiplying, we're going to just say 3 tens times 4 or 3 times 4. 3 times 4 is 12, I must then add on these underneath here, which would give me 15. Now I know this is 400 times 4, or 400 multiplied by 4, but 4 times 4 is 16, plus the 1 is 17. I've then got 6,000 times 4, which would be 24,000, plus my 1,000, which is 25,000. So then we've got our placeholder already because this is actually like saying... 30 multiplied by 8 so we'd have to do 3 times 8 which is 24 multiplied by 10 which is 240 that's why that 0 is there as our placeholder already so we're going to carry our 2 under there convert it into our hundreds and then we're ready to keep the going so we've done our 3 times our 8 3 times 3 or 3 tens times 3 tens is 9 plus our 2 down here is 11 our 30 times 400 that's why when it starts to get a bit challenging, it's easier for us to just say 3 times 4, which is 12, plus 1, which is 13. Now, it's really important here, you might have noticed that I'm being careful to make sure my columns stay lined up. And then I need to do my 3 times 6, which is 18, plus 1, which is 19. So I'm now ready to do my final stage, which is to add up my two rows. So 2 plus 0 is 2, so I'm actually using my column addition here. 5 plus 4 is 9. 7 plus 1 is 8. 5 plus 3 is 8. 2 plus 9, I've got 11, so I'm going to carry that under, and then I've got 2. So my answer is going to be, or my product, is 218,892. Finally, we are going to have a look at division. So we're going to look at the short division and the long division method and have a look at the differences. So the words we use for division are divide and share equally. They're the main ones you'll hear. It might also be split equally or evenly, quotient, and when we're looking at our number sentence, it's our dividend divided by our divisor equals our quotient. 
Well, basically, we've got an amount of things. We're going to split them into this many groups, and that's how many are in each group. So firstly, we're going to have a look at our short division method, or you might know it as the bus stop method. So we are going to do 8,694 divided by 7. So we're going to see how many 7s there are in 8,694. So the first thing we're going to do is see how many 7s there are in 8, or how many 7s there are in 8,000, which there are 1, and then we're going to have 1 remaining, because my 1 times 7 is 7, and then I've got 1 left over. There are 2 7s in 16. 2 times 7 is 14, and the difference between 14 and 16 is 2, so I've got 2 remaining. And then I need to see how many 7s go into 29. There are 4, with 1 remaining. And then how many 7s go into 14? There are 2, and there are no more remainders. So that's me finished, and that's my answer. Now let's have a look at an example if we were to get a remainder. So we're going to do 6,391 divided by 4. So how many 4s go into 6? There are 1 with 2 left over because the difference between 4 and 6 is 2. How many 4s go into 23? There are 5 with 3 left over. How many 4s go into 39? There are 9. 9 times 4 is 36. So I've got three left over again. How many fours are in 31? I have got seven. Seven times four is 28. So I have got three left over. I could just write remainder three with a little r and a three, or I could show that I understand that I've got three left out of a full group of four. So I've been splitting this into equal groups of four. Maybe they're four sweets. Maybe it's four people. And out of that, what I've got left over is three, where there should have been a full group of four if I was splitting it evenly. So I've got three quarters. So I have got to exactly the same stage with my question here. I've done the same working out and I've got the same remainder. I've got three left over. Instead of writing it as a fraction, I'm going to continue and try and get my decimal number. Now with this question, you might have already worked out what three quarters is equivalent to as a decimal, but so that we can do this with more, let's go through the process. So if I've got three left over, I can put 0 0.00000, I could just carry on because it does not change the value of the number. I'm not adding in anything into my place value, it just doesn't change the value of the number. So it I've got three left over and I'm going to put that here. I can then say how many fours are in 30 and I know that I've got seven with two remaining. I can then say how many fours have I got in 20 and I've got five with no remainders. So I could write my answer as a decimal or as a fraction. Now let's have a look at long division. Now the first time I'm going to show you this, I'm going to do it with short division and long division side by side to hopefully help. And I'm going to do it with a divisor of a times table that I hope you would know before we get into more challenging ones. So step one is always to write out our times table first of our divisor. So I'm going to just write my 12s along the bottom. Even though I know them, it's going to really help me to have them in front of me. I'll go up this high and then if we need more we can go up further later. So the first thing I would do here in my short division is how many 12s are there in 8? 0. How many 12s are there in 87? There are, let me use here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven. I can't go here because I'm going too far, so I would have 7. What have I got left over? The difference between 84 and 87 is 3, so I'm going to carry my 3 here. I've then got how many 12s are in 39? 1, 2, 3. And then what's the difference between 36 and 39 is 3. How many 12s are in 32? 1, 2. And then what's my remainder? What's the difference between 32 and 24? So I might need to use my number bonds, 6, 7, 8. So I've got 8 
twelfths, or I could simplify that further. Now let's have a look at the long division. Now we start in exactly the same way, saying how many twelves are in eight? There are zero. How many twelves are there in eighty-seven? So exactly the same, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now instead of putting our remainder here, because we will be dealing with bigger numbers, we're actually going to work out our remainder underneath. So I know that 7 times 12 was 84. Now before I went through this process just by doing it like this, so now I'm actually able to work it out. So I've got 7 take away, three, seven take away 4 is 3, and put my 0 here. Now instead of me carrying it over just here, I'm going to bring my 9 down to meet it instead. So exactly the same, I've still got 39 and 39, but I've brought it down instead of across. It's just going to help me when I deal with bigger numbers. I'm then asking the same question, how many 12s are in 39? 1, 2, 3. See how helpful it is to just have my times tables already written out. So I've got 3. 3 times 12 is 36, and then I'm going to work that out again and bring my next number down. So instead of moving it across where I have 32, I've just brought it down to have 32. It's just a longer way to, to lay it out to help us with those bigger numbers. How many 12s are in 32? We've got two. And then my 24 underneath. And then I need to do my subtraction. and I've got eight left over. I don't have any more numbers to bring down, so this is my remainder. Eight twelfths. Maybe you could simplify it for me, or maybe you could even convert it to a decimal. So let's have a look at this when the divisor is a bit higher, and not maybe not a times table you just know. So the first job is to write out our times tables. Now, if it's a bit more challenging, you've got a couple of different ways you could do this. You could, you might just know them and be able to write them down or you could partition it to 20 plus 3 equals 23 and then I need to add my 20 on each time and then my 3 on each time and then my 20 on and then my 3 on and then my 20 on and then my 3 on so I'm actually doing sort of my times tables and it's helping me to write them out or I could do it where I'll just show you over here quickly. So 23, I could do it as mini column methods. Plus by 23, 69. And then I could just circle the times tables. Either way, or you might just be able to work it out yourself. So I don't want to spend too much time on my times tables. So I've written out some and I can always go back and add more if I need to. So the first thing I'm going to do is how many 23s are in 5? 0. How many 23s are in 56? So there are 1, 2, I can't go any further because that would take me over 56. So there are 2, and then I've got 2 times 23 is 46, and then I can do my subtraction. I then need to bring my number down. So I've now got 109. It's so helpful because I've got my times tables written down. How many 23s are there in 109? One, two, three, four. So there are four whole groups of 23 in 109, and that would make 92. Four times 23, one, two, three, four is 92. I'm then going to do my subtraction. Nine take away two is seven, and then 10 take away. 100 take away 90 and then I'm going to bring down my 7 remember it's instead of doing that remainder 17 up here we're just bringing it down so there's more space it's more spread out and then how many 23s are in 177 now if I wanted to check I could go back and I can do my final adding here just to check it doesn't go over so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 there are seven whole groups of 23 in 177. 23 multiplied by seven is 161. And then do my subtraction. Seven take away one, six. But nothing more to bring down. There are no groups of 23 and 16, so that must be my remainder. 16, 
out of a whole group of 23. So my answer, my quotient will be 247 and 16 20 thirds. Now pause the video and have a little practice at these questions. 342 multiplied by 97, you really need to know your 9 and 7 times table for that or use a multiplication square to help you. Now the next one, you work it out in exactly the same way. Don't get tricked by the fact that our missing number box is on a different side to what you would usually see it. Remember, it doesn't matter. It's saying that whatever this is, is equal to whatever's on this side. So we've got 4,286 multiplied by 23, and you do that in the normal long multiplication method, and then your answer goes in the box. I've then got a short division question for you, 6,947 divided by 3, and then your long division, 8,932 divided by 32. Do not panic with your long division, take your time. Step 1, write out all your multiples of 32, the numbers in the 32 times table, and then go back and watch the long division section if you need to. And here are your answers. Don't worry if you've made a mistake. We all make mistakes lots, but it's likely that it's just actually one of the digits that's wrong if you have made a mistake. So don't worry at all. Go back and check. And well done for your hard work on multiplication and division. Well done with your hard work on the four operations. Please send me any questions that you've got by email and let me know if there's anything else you would like me to make a maths recap video on and I will do it. I know we didn't include the decimal part of the four operations but we will do that another time and we will also have a little look at some percentages and some more fractions. So let me know if you need anything and well done for your hard work.